Hello, and welcome to episode 13 of Sports Betting Conversations. The title of today's episode is The Simulation Game, How Angstrom Offers a Peerless Pricing Solution for Major U.S. Sports. Today, we are joined by Sean Colley, CEO of Angstrom Sports, and as always, Kevin Twitchell, advisor at DataArt. Uh, Sean, thanks again for joining us here uh, for uh, our interview. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us how you got to where you are today. Yeah, thanks, Russell. Um, so I'm the CEO of Angstrom. Um, how did I get here today? I uh, sort of ask myself that question uh, fairly fairly regularly. Um, now, I've had a career in, in financial services, but always been very interested in, in sports. Um, I, um, I'm a sports fan. I, I, I have bet on sports, you know, the whole of my, my adult life being a resident over in Europe. We're, we're um, in the position where we can, where we've been able to do that for, for longer than, you know, a lot of the, uh, the market that we serve over in North America. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, I guess I, I, um, I, I, I got to hang around the wrong guys and got dragged into the industry at the, uh, at the right time. And, you know, here we are with, with Angstrom. So as I say, you know, my background is, is principally in, in financial services, but, uh, but, the, the, but financial services and, and sports betting are, are not all that dissimilar at their, at their core. Um, you know, fundamentally, it's around the pricing of risk and the management of risk, um, and making sure that you know the the end user um, product is um, is is saleable. It's it's one that's attractive to to, to customers, uh, and so it, it's it's not all, all that dissimilar. Um, uh, in terms of you know more specifically, you know how I got to be where I am and. and the foundations of Angstrom. Um, you know, the core of the business really was formed around a, a proprietary trading operation, which was based over in Europe. And unusually for um, some of the guys over here, they they saw an opportunity to focus in on on a couple of the US sports. Um, you guys are, are are very fortunate that the that the that some of the major sports that you play in MLB and NBA and, and NFL and um and the and the sort of the supporting NCAA leagues and minor leagues around that are incredibly rich in uh, in data and um and the guys who who started um some of the building some of the the technology that we utilize here at Angstrom um they saw an opportunity to to use that data in a way that Perhaps no one had done so ever before for the purposes of building models and and trading um, those, those models. And then um, I invested in, in in that group of that group of individuals and the and the, um, the the operations that they were putting together at the time. And we all we all of us talked about what might be the case if uh, if PASPA got repealed at some point in in the future. And I think. Um, you know, for us and, and the rest of the world and, and, and North America, um, you know, the, the events unfolded rather more quickly than than perhaps we were ready for and, and everyone else is ready for. But, you know, fortunately for us, you know, we were in, we were in the right place in order to take advantage of that. And we decided to, to build um, a B2B business around what was probably um, one of the more, if not the most advanced uh, pieces of, of uh, technology that was specifically focused on on us sports and uh, and us sports betting so that was back in 2000 and early 2019 and you know here we are nearly four years later and um you know we've got a, a thriving b2b business and uh, and and focused on you know serving what are as i said the you know predominantly north american based um sports book operator uh, customers ours in 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 furnishing them with um with with product that they can Use on their platforms and and uh, improve um, improve their their offering with their customers. Yeah, excellent. Um, you know, when we had our uh, previous call, you, you went into some good depth about you know some of the interesting, um, I guess, uh, analytical strategies that, that you have in place in order to kind of come up with a you know a, a product that's uh, you know a bit um, unique on the market. Uh, I would say. Uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, I mean, the, um, again, it was sort of fortuitous, really, that we um, built our technology in the way that we did, but the um, the, the guys and, and the, the, the core of the team have been involved in the sports betting industry for, you know, you know, decades in various different parts of the supply chain. But, you know, when they set out to, to tackle um, predicting outcomes in, um, in MLB games and then NBA and then NFL, uh, games better than anyone else in the world. The the approach that they thought would be the most accurate and lead to the most efficient pricing was to um, was to, to to make those predictions on a very granular basis. So player level predictions, play by play level predictions, and to the extent that we um, wanted to. Um, trade at a, at, a, at a much more aggregated basis, let's say, for example, on you know, what we call the main lines in, in sports betting. So, you know, who's going to win and by how much. Um, the, 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 the key fundamentals that underpin the way we would come to those views was if you can predict in a very accurate, granular way, you, that's the best way you can predict at, a, at, a, at an aggregated basis. And that was, the, that was the, the way we went about it. As that turns out, it has given us a huge advantage in being able to price not just the main lines very well, which is what we've been trading and doing as our stock in trade for the last 15 years, but all of the derivative markets and every single underlying event that contributes towards what the overall outturn of a game um, is, and um, as as you know, you guys will be aware. As I think the the the, the industry is becoming more aware, um, being able to offer a, a, a breadth of a product which covers not just the main lines, but you know the, the the stuff that you know people can can build narratives around and engage in their in their team around and engage in. The, the, the sports around, which is sort of player level stories or you know stats level stories or um, you know engagement that isn't just who's going to win the game. Um, that that's equipped us very well to to be able to provide our clients with the type of product that their customers are, are asking for. So so yeah, it's a, it's our, our, our sort of our beginnings in 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 predicting in a very granular way that's given us a. Um, perhaps a, a different um, starting point mm. from certainly the way the industry was um, was was pricing up markets at the points in time when we started, and maybe you know there are a few guys who are, who are trying to do it more on on the lines of what the way we've been doing for the last fifteen years or so of, of late. Yeah, and and some of the I, I recall like going back to our last conversation, there was. Definitely some interesting uh, points you had uh, regarding like end play and you know some of the some of the uh, I would say you know uh, factors that you evaluate uh, real time, which uh, you know, I was kind of I was blown away with you know the, the depths to uh, what you analyze right in terms of your prediction model. Yeah, I mean you know as I say we started out you know as a as a as a group and when we built our technology having to win money based on our opinions and the majority of those opinions were were in play opinions and you've got to you know incorporate a tremendous amount of variables in your you know in your decisions in your assessment of of what the the likely outcomes are going to be in order to be more accurate than, than the market but uh but yeah it's it, it's everything from um you know <clears throat> the, the the players on the court or the or the field, um, the the weather at the time, the score, the context, whether a team is on the road or not, um, whether the game's you know gone to a blowout situation, and everyone knows you know score line in, in an NBA game or an MLB game gets to or an NFL game gets to a, a certain threshold, the team's going to change their entire strategy. Mm -hmm. How does the, how does the team change their entire strategy? Who are they going to rest? Who are they going to bring on instead? How are the players going to you know behave and respond to the to the to the guy that's come onto the court at that point in time? Um, when when you were expecting LeBron to carry on and play another four and a half minutes or five minutes or whatever it was going to be, 
You know, they're now winning the game by 30. He's going to come off, play, you know, far less than was, it, than, than was expected. How do the players around uh, the new replacement um, respond? How, do, how does the defensive team line up differently? You know, it is, it is tremendously complex. And, and when you are adopting the predictive approach that we are, which is to um, re-simulate, to, to, to reassess um, what every single outturn of the game is likely to be from any given point in time once you're in play, um, is, um, it's taken a lot of practice. It's taken you know, over a decade of, of refinement and work um, in order to have, have confidence that the way we do it is, is pretty accurate. It's pretty close to what happens in real life. And closer to what happens in real life than um, than than anyone else um, is is able to, to to predict. So yeah, it's fast. It's it's uh, it's it's and it's way beyond me. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I sort of I look in awe at the guys who uh, who are responsible for having to um, build the models and build the systems and the ecosystems that 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 exist in order to facilitate and incorporate all of this all of this information that's there. Yeah, and I'm sure it's like it's uh, just less common, Kevin. I mean, you yeah. have a, a bunch of questions, but uh, I'm sure it's like ever evolving for you, especially like with um, uh, in the U.S. major sports. Uh, you know, over the last what is it? You know, six to ten years, maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, look, look at the NBA. You know, the whole strategy of the gameplay has changed. Right, everything's beyond the arc now or when there are rule changes, right? And whether it's in the NFL, any sport, um, that's going to affect, you know, your, your, your prediction model as well. So it's, you have to always be like on the cusp of, you know, what's uh, current and what's coming, right? In terms of- Yeah, for least. sure, for sure. I, I guess, you know, this, this is a really interesting point because it, it goes to the heart of the way in which, um, uh, markets have been priced historically and the deficiencies in that approach and how we price markets and, and the advantages of, of taking the approach we do. You know? Historically, um, there would have been uh, a, a, an assessment in relation to a team's average performance in certain sets of circumstances and, 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 and a view that a team especially a team with X, Y, and Z in it, are X points better than the average NBA team, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that advantage increases by 0.25 points or 0.5 points or one point, depending on a, num a number of different factors. That's, that's, quite a, that, that's a very um, swift uh, way of determining what the, what the right price is for a, for a contest or a, or a game um, on a pre-game basis, and it's very efficient, and it, and and, it, and it's and it's worked. Those models have become more and more sophisticated. What what those models don't deal very well with is if you change the rules or if you change the way a team is playing strategy-wise, you you have to kind of rip up the rule book on, on all of the averages and all of the the, the, the analytics that you've done on a, on, a, on a team level basis up until that point in time. And you have to try and guess what is going to happen and the way teams are going to behave um, in the new rules environment or with a new, um, a, a new kind of uh, generally accepted way of playing the game, like shoot threes as much as you can, you know? And, yeah. and, and, the, and the advantage of, of going at the problem in a very granular way is you know, we can we don't have to kind of make these universal changes to these averages we can say right well you know players with these types of attributes and capabilities are going to become relatively more valuable and are going to be relied on relatively more what mm -hmm. happens when, what happens when you put them in the mix more often you know what happens when you increase the usage of them what happens when you know, you, you you know you ask these guys to shoot from you know outside the three point range. You know what you know forty percent more than they than they used to. You know what what happens in those events because we've our models have, have 
uh, have got the answers, you've just got to ask it the right questions, you know, at the outset. The same goes with a rule change, you know, if you've got, you know, you're playing seven innings rather than nine because you've got, a, you know, a, a, a congested season because a global pandemic has hit, you know, you toggle the rules and you say, okay, put the same players in and, and tell us what's going to happen over seven innings and do that on a on a pitch by pitch basis and and that's what our approach facilitates which is um a big advantage whenever there's a, a change to the pre-game situation a huge advantage in trying to figure out the way a game is going to play out once it goes in play uh mm -hmm. the, the 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 difficulty with the preeminent you know process uh yeah, is that it relies on averages and and it relies on average uh, profiles of scoring patterns. You know, if you've got um, the Chiefs in as seven point favourites, you know there there will be a generally accepted view as to how those seven points are generated over the course of four quarters. But what happens when you know the Chiefs go down by you know sixteen in the first quarter? How are they going to play from there onwards? And it's very difficult to do that if you don't have a, a very granular way of, of, of predicting the outcomes in, in those in those sports. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Kevin, do you want to? Yeah, get just, a question? I'm just yeah. fascinated by the whole model. So, how's your, you know, just taking it a little step here into you know the business of it? Um, how has your approach been in dealing with with customers and and launching this in the US and 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 the other sport I'm most fascinated with and watch too much of is is the NHL. Um you talk a lot about basketball. Um I think there's a there's a lot of complexities in US sports, you know, and I just thinking about power play in play betting now with the NHL, power plays and trades and systems. Um how do you deal with that? You know, it's kind of two questions there. Yeah, so well, I'll take your I'll take your last question first because it kind of links into the way in which we we go about modern sports, and I think you make a um, you raise a great point. You know, NHL is is probably one of the more difficult of the US sports to to predict. You know, it's an invasion game, much you know, similar to NBA. It's it's really quite difficult, but right. um, but that's way more nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, I. I I'm, I'm a, I grew up, you know, consuming European sports. So I'm a complete convert, but I have to say, NHL is the is the latest sport for me to to become a fan of, and I am I'm hooked. You know, it, it is it's so fast paced, so fast, um, and I like the fact that you know, relatively speaking, it's it's low scoring. You know, it, it's you know, it, it's there are fewer very significant events that can occur in an NHL game that that will you know drive the the outturn of, of the game whereas NBA obviously are ticking along you know a, a score every you know 15 seconds or whatever it is okay. um and uh, and it's so but it does present a very different challenge in that respect um similar to NBA in terms of you know it's continuous um and and it's an invasion game um, but it's but it's a little more challenging because of the the sort of the, the greater variance, you know, lower lower number of you know scores versus NBA, for example. Um, but it's all possible to be to, to model. You know, you 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 put in place the framework, you put in place the 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 way in which the game is played. You look at the way players react to different situations. And the way teams react and coaches react to different situations, and then you set situations up in some sort of fictional land, which is which is where our modelers live, and they play the game out a whole bunch of times, and then they're able to say, well, you know, on on, on balance, sixty seven percent of the time this happens, and twenty two percent of the time this happens. So it's 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 all that's how we that's how we take on that that type of a, a, a challenge. Um, and and as I say, you know, our, our approach, our, our way of um, generating those insights and those predictions is a lot more accurate than saying, okay, well, historically, when you know team A is and team A is the favourite by um, by one point or two points, 
when they found themselves in this situation, this is what they've done. And uh, that's that's quite a, an inaccurate way of, of going through an in-play situation. And, that, and that's that's the that's the difference. Um, in terms of um, uh, you know, how we tackled uh, taking our expertise yes. um, in, in, into the US, um, I think um, yeah, very early on, um, the approach of all of the uh, license operators or those who were in receipt of a uh, of, of a license to, to operate a, a sports book online or retail um, looked to the European market and the European providers one way or the other, either the B2C operators or the, the B2B providers to um, help kickstart their operations because you know, the, as, as we know, you know, they were, it was coming off a low base, you know, relatively few people employed in the industry. And, and a relative you know, scarcity of expertise um, in, in um, running sportsbook operations. And um, you know, we have, like some of our European um, counterparts who participate in other parts of the, 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 the supply chain platform, um, sportsbook ops, uh, you know, B2Cs, B2Cs themselves, um, yeah, you know, we've been able to um, uh, come and talk to the, the the operators who are getting going in the US uh, and to demonstrate our expertise and to demonstrate the fact that we've been doing what we what we've been doing for a long a long time and um, the advantages of, of our approaches have been have been have been listened to you know because of the I guess the, the the depth of experience that we've got in in doing what we do. Um, yeah, that said, I think um, there are some, you know, very significant differences in the way that the US industry is is evolving. And, you know, not least, um, that's the nature of the sports themselves and the nature of the US consumer. And, you know, that's it's not our job uh, as, a, as a provider of, of pricing services to, <coughs> excuse me, anticipate um, those needs. The, the, the guys who... Um, who are best placed to do that are the sportsbook operators themselves. You know, they you got you guys are the ones who are close to the consumer, close to what the user experience needs to look like. We can, we can, you know, give it a go. We have our views ourselves, but our job is to try and facilitate and enable the vision that our, our clients and our partners have in, in terms of the direction they want to take their, their sportsbooks, whether that's you know their their strategy in promotions or pricing strategy or the way they want to take their content in terms of product offering um, and you know any other aspects that we can innovate and help innovate uh, around any of that so um, so yeah so you know how, how we went to market we were, we were fortunate to be a part of a wave of, of, of experienced Europeans who were able to bring their experience to bear in, in, a, in what was a nascent market. Um, but we also, you know, we also listen, you know, it's a different marketplace. We don't have all the answers, but we do have lots of ingredients that can that can create some fantastic solutions for our clients. So it's about listening to, to what our clients want and trying to um, trying to enable that for them. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, uh, I agree with, with that strategy and sometimes, um, or maybe more often than not, like especially with the sports books, they kind of overlook that, right? They're like, here's our product, use it the way that we think you're gonna uh, like using it. Um, and they, they, as far as I've seen, and I've heard of kind of pockets of like users meeting consortium with uh, uh, sports books, but not too broadly. Um, but you know, it, I mean, it's it's all about UI, which will drive you know, usability, retention, and, you know. Yeah, I, I, think, it's, I, think, it's, I think it's a very, um, it's a very unsurprising that the, that the US industry is, is going on, on the journey, is taking the journey in the way that it's taking, you know, the, the step one was, okay, there's potential now, plasma's repeal. Step two is, you know, what's the way to, 
to, to regulate this and where is it going to get regulated and yeah, what does the landscape look like? Step three is, okay, now let's go and get some presence and any operator who, you know, wanted to participate had to, you know, go through all of the, you know, pain uh, uh, that they have all had to go through in navigating the different jurisdictions and the marketing that's required in order to get some sort of a foothold and all of the regulatory compliance that, that is way more complicated for a US operator than it is in any other large jurisdiction, you know, in the rest of the world, um, in order to operate on a multi-state basis, um, and 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 now um, operators are increasingly going. Okay, well, we we've negotiated steps one to three. We've got a bit of a landscape, and we've got we've got a, a, a customer user base. Um, now's the time to to focus our attention in on on product and and performance of that product. Um, and so I think it's it's entirely understandable that the first, you know, three, four years of this journey have, have been spent, you know, building the foundations, but that now it's it's about, you know, making what is, um, you know, a, a, a probably a, um, a, not a rudimentary offering, but it's definitely not the aspirational offering that I know our clients and, and the industry more broadly is, is 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 shooting for in terms of you know giving customers the ability to engage in the way that we know customers want to be able to engage. Um, it's a complicated process to go through. We'll enable all that, but um, but yeah, that, that's I, th I feel like that's where we're at right now. I think the the, the evolution that is about to come in in product and engagement, and that'll happen across in, in multiple different ways. Um, is is starting, you know, is starting now. What has been going on in in, in the last six to twelve months, but is a is a, a theme or a trend set to continue. Yeah, you actually are kind of segued into how we usually like wrap these conversations right. with, which is like, what do you see coming in the next several right. years? Not only in uh, your specific market, but overall in the sports betting industry, in U.S. or, or globally. And just and on that <clears throat> with with big events like we just got through the World Cup, you know, and now we're moving into Super Bowl. Do do big do big events also play a big part in you know like the way you look at your business and and rolling out in the future? You know, do you look at ten pole events? Uh, yeah, for events? sure. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's natural for the whole industry to use the big events as the place to launch. Um, new products or new innovations. Yeah, you've got very concentrated eyes uh, on on you know on 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 a certain limited number of minutes, um, and and that's um, obviously strategically a very um, efficient way to 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 reach you know the, a, a big audience if you've got a new release coming up. So yeah, of course you know we do the, we do the same thing. Um, we we work hand in hand with our clients who are you know thinking about the same thing themselves. So you know, at the start of the season is is usually a good time to be launching a new product, and then post season playoffs, Super Bowl, World Cup, you know, it's a great time to be to be putting some new innovation out there and trying to try to steal the limelight. Right, it's trying to trying to. Um, uh, trying to beat the competition by, by by stealing the limelight and saying, "Hey, come look what we're doing! It's different and it's really fun, and um, you can't do this anywhere else." <laughs> and, uh, and and we work with our clients in order to to try to enable them in, in doing that. We come up with our own ideas around that. We have our own roadmap around that. But but really, um, the way that we work is is as a it's a, it's in partnership with our clients. We don't have hundreds of clients. We have you know, relatively few but quite deep relationships where we, um, where we, you know, we, we obviously provide a core service, but but we we also try to act as a as a partner and a consultant and an advisor and and a um, and a co-developer, you know, with with our, with our clients in order to, you know, try and achieve those types of aims like hitting a marquee event. Um, predicting the uh, predicting the future of the industry. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're very good at predicting uh, what, what happens <laughs> over the course of uh, yeah, we're testing, uh, testing uh, the software. Uh, of, a, of a sports game, an NFL game, or an NBA <laughs> game. 
um, predicting what's going to happen in this world, um, <laughs> given the uh, given the factors extraneous to the sports betting industry, is proven to be a, a pretty dicey business over the last uh, five years or so. Um, but no, I think there are. I, I talked to one of those themes that I think will be prevalent over the next, um, you know, three to five years, which will be in, you know, an, an increasing focus on on product, user experience, um, maybe um, less of a focus on advertising and marketing as a means of customer acquisition and customer retention. Um, I'm not going to talk to the efficacy of, of uh, marketing campaigns and advertising as opposed to the, the quality of product. I'm going to uh, obviously I'll, I'll sing to my uh, uh, my own tune there, you know, and, and so product should be at the center of um, of any good proposition. Um, but I think I think the market has uh, has um, asked the industry to take a look at its operating model and the way in which. Um, it has been um, focused on growing market share, perhaps at the expense of, uh, uh, of a focus on bottom line performance. Um, and I think we'll see increasingly operators far more focused on the financial performance of their, of their, uh, of their platforms and their offering, um, which might mean better products, might mean um, a, a more effective product mix, it might mean better pricing, um, and it might mean you know less just cutting out some of those overheads, some of that cost that has historically, say historically, over the last three to four years, um, been a, a, a necessary part of growing market share. So I think that's that's one aspect. I think the other aspect, which is perhaps a bit more more questionable, but a view um, that I think a few people hold, and, and I think I would probably subscribe to is that you know connected to that there have been a huge number of new market entrants into the US and um, that's been a very positive uh, factor um, but I do think that we will see some consolidation um, across the sector um, either that consolidation will come in the form of market share being consolidated within um, you know, fewer players or, or you know, a bit of m &A activity. Um, but I, you know, I could definitely foresee, you know, that occurring, you know, this, that would be a, a, a sort of a, 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 a natural reaction to the, the way that the markets are at the moment and some of the pressures that the operators um, are faced with. Um, and then the, 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 the third um, theme, I suppose, that we are on the lookout for is, uh, it is the the growing kind of aspiration to build businesses around sports engagement more broadly. Um, you know, sports betting is just one aspect of the way in which um, we, all of us, have an opportunity to um, you know create a, a truly revolutionary way in which to interact with the things that we love, which is our sports teams and the players that we're fans of. Um, you know, it, it's been a, you know, DFS was, was, a, was a fantastic evolution and, and North America brought that to the world. Um, that was a new way of engaging with, with sports. Um, sports betting is a, a, a part of that. But I think engagement as a theme, I think is going to be um, a, a very important one. And um, an increasingly, um, uh, individual uh, approach to that, you know, how, how how can operators, how can participants in the sports engagement industry cater for the sports fan as an individual and and not as the, you know, not as a a, a mass of um, homogenous people with homogenous tastes because that's we know that's just not the case. Um, you know, Kevin and, and Russell, you'll have very, very different priorities when you flip the TV on at the weekend and catch up on sports, which where are you going to go first and who are you looking for and where are you going next, you know, and, and, and engagement, sports betting is a part of that. Well, really. that's a Boston team zone. 
we'll 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 both we'll, 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 we'll watch that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we'll have one thing in common. And then he'll watch some crazy tennis match, and then yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I think you hit it with the engage the engagement part, and I was just thinking about it, thinking about baseball. You know, they're spending gobs of money this week signing these players: three hundred fifty, yeah. three hundred ten, three hundred twelve thousand million. You know, the leagues combining with sports betting and creating a fan engagement, um, you know, with sports betting part of their media entertainment package of their sport, I think is is also going to play into that because I don't know how you're going to justify these salaries if you don't have people engaging in your sports, whether it be through on their phone while they're sitting in the game, the whole thing. Yeah. And, and having some fun, you know, like, oh, my God, he's going to hit a home run first inning. You know, you got to yeah. get exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. And MLB is an interesting one, right? Because, you know, of the three, you know, it's probably the one that's that has got most um most to lose in the coming years. Yeah. And therefore and therefore most to gain by that's some new innovation, you know. And and so I was just thinking. Um, yeah, you know, they've they've, they've they've there's a tremendous amount that can be done in MLB um to improve engagement and make it just make it more fun you know and, and export that fun to new markets you know copy the nba and and the nfl and the way that they've been able to engage european audiences as well you know I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm biased in terms of growth opportunities but i do see um you know as well as you know the, the demographics in 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 us i do see international expansion for us sports as being oh, yeah. A, a massive opportunity and MLB so far is you know the, is the laggard you know it's it's way yeah. behind the way it's been able to to, to engage its following or, or kind of expand its following so and, and predictive um analytics and and the type of stuff that we do um is a is a fundamental part of you know quite a lot of those aspects of engagement you know? not, not just in sports betting but across um you know create Giving giving viewers and, and and fans a way of um, constructing a story that they can engage with mm. that that I think yeah. is is right at the heart of what yeah. we as an industry can can do is we you know you can't you can't like you can't make up a, a story on your own you need you need some some pillars you need some information you need some narratives you need some ideas you need to read other people's opinions and and that those things can't come from nowhere either they come from insights and analytics so um you know that's 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 a big a big part of what we're focused on as well excellent well uh Please, sean thank you really so much insightful. for today yeah this this was a great conversation um yeah it's amazing i think we you know i'll speak for kevin we definitely learned a lot from you um so uh i appreciate your that's, time that's it was, a, it was a pleasure, and uh, I wish you both luck with your with your Boston following. As you say, probably um, <laughs> it was it was a good run, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, yeah, it was I, a good run. Now yeah. it's all about the Bruins. Yeah, there you go. Exactly, yeah, it's their turn. Yeah, it's their turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Let me just all right, speak to you both. All right, great. Yeah. Thanks.